Warning, because of how this episode was recorded and due to many technical faults, there will be continuity errors. You have been warned. Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Voices, the debut album from Resurgence. Now, this is another request review. Um, I will admit, i um, got a bit of a backlog and I was meaning to get this, get to this quite a while ago. Unfortunately, various things happened. I was ill and ended up getting a black eye during wrestling training. Um, all sorts of fun things have been going on in the background, but Finally back to things. Now this is much more sort of in my typical vein. It's much more sort of classic hard rock and heavy metal kind of sound. It definitely has this feel of being a love letter to those styles of music, particularly sort of 70s and 80s hard rock and thrash and elements of the new wave of British heavy metal. Initially it feels like they're sort of figuring out their particular style. They're sort of they're drawing upon their influences more on the first four songs, and then after that point, it feels much more like they're coming into their own. So, with all that in mind, let's get into it. So, to open the album, we have the track Envy. Now, that's got a really cool sort of southern rock style to it, mixed with elements of Motorhead. It's got that very hard driving guitar. It builds up nicely and it rounds out with a good sort of choral chant. You can imagine if it was being played live, people would really be getting into it and, you know, they'd be chanting along with the drawn out envy. And it very much feels like the music is emphasising this thirst for freedom and the opportunity of self-expression. It's very good for opening the album as a sort of mission statement, which is generally sort of analysing self-expression, going through your various states of mind, analysing aspects like depression and the feelings of restriction. And Envy really does well to paint the initial scenes and what we're in for for the rest of the album. Following that, we have Black Arrow. Now that very much has the sort of cool classic hard rock sound going for it, very much in the vein of Led Zeppelin with Communication Breakdown, mixed with elements of Black Sabbath. You very much get the feel of them conveying the message that that style of music and playing it, listening to it, just interacting with it over the course of almost 50 years has helped people work through their problems and has especially affected the band in greatly positive ways. You also get the feel that this is very much where the band starts to get a proper sense of identity and really start to feel their own footing. It's not entirely their own sound. As I say, you still majorly get the feel for where their influences come from, but you also start to see where they're finding themselves and coming into their own element and how that's going to be a driving force for the rest of the album proper. After that, we have Falling Out. Now that opens with a really nice grooving guitar, which very much feels like it juxtaposes the overall message of the song in a really cool way. And we frequently have a return to that offset feel the overall message of the song being the struggles of depression and generally sort of presenting yourself and talking at like you're doing better than you actually are. I won't lie, I didn't initially get the overall message of the song 
until I had some personal mental health problems, which very much helped to clue me into what was actually being said, particularly in the vein of saying that you're doing better than you actually are. In fact, to the extent of somewhat self-destructive habits. Not entirely ruinous, but problematic if you don't address them once you realise them. Because of that personal connection, it does sort of boost it up to one of my favourites on the album. From there, we have Fatal Behaviour. Now that really has a sense of the band fully coming into their own and starting to really find their footing. It very much has this nice gradual build of guitar and drums that really fully explodes into a sense of self-expression and interacts really nicely with the concept of self and interdestructive habits as a consequence of not appropriately acknowledging your personal problems. And the way the music progresses, it feels like there's finally a explosion of freedom and self-expression of breaking out of the cycle. I've emphasised how the guitar work nicely progresses, but also the drums really help to ramp up this feeling of breaking out and finally finding that means to express where you need to go and what you need to do to get to that point. Following from that, we have Punk Wave. Now, this isn't going to come as a surprise that it's very much a showcase of sort of hardcore and skate punk styles. It kind of, for me at least, feels like a bit of a send up of the genre, whilst also being a love letter to it. I won't deny I would have liked to hear inclusions of more sort of older styles of punk, sort of Temple Tudors, Stiff Little Fingers, and some Dead Kennedys, that style. But still, it's really enjoyable track. It very well variates and moves between the two different styles that it's going for, and very effectively showcases how well the band has integrated and interacted with those genres. After that, we have Astro Traveller, which that's one of my favourites on the album for being very much in the vein of new wave of British heavy metal, mixed with sort of Metallica, particularly Iron Maiden's Fear of the Dark, mixed with Fade of Black, you kind of get that sort of vibe from them. It's got that nice, cool, gradual build up, and as it progresses, you feel sort of this exploration of escape and this and um, you feel this sort of introspective exploration and spiritual awakening going on. The only real complaint of the song that I have is that the passing of the actual song title, Astro Traveller, in the last 30 seconds feels a bit weird feels a bit off kilter to how the musical progression is. It almost feels like there's, they're trying to cram it in because they forgot to do so over the course of the song proper. It could actually do with being, say, a minute longer just to make that feel a bit more fluid. With that said, that's a very minor niggle in the whole context of a overall great song. Following from that, we have Honoured and Trusted. Now that's very much in the Southern rock style again. You've got sort of influences from Blackstone Cherry and Shinedown coming through, mixed a little with the style of metal that was prevalent during the late 90s and early 2000s. What's really cool about it is the tempo variations that go on. It's 
it starts out with a steady pace and then ramps up during the last third, but also switches in between different tempos. I won't lie, I would like a longer version to see how that tempo variation could be done even more so. The one thing I will admit is I'm a bit uncertain about the overall message of Honoured and Trusted. Josh Ratcliffe, if you'd be up for sort of discussing this album and in, in particular going through what I got right with my understandings of the message, what I didn't and what I completely missed, you know, I'd love to be able to do that sort of thing. Then we've got Rock Island, which it's very much a love letter to sort of all the rock and metal that's come before. It's got massive Thin Lizzy and Motley Crue vibes. It, you kind of have the feel of a mixture of the boys are back in town and girls, girls, girls. No, not girls, girls, girls. Um, Kickstart my heart. And it's just, it's a really fun track. I, I kind of feel like more bands need to just have this all-out track that is paying tribute to what has influenced and inspired and brought them to where they are today. There's not really that much to say other than it's a really fun track and it's a great easter egg hunt for anyone who's especially into their music history. From there we've got Walk Away which very much feels like a early Black Sabbath Ozzy Osbourne kind of vibe. Um, especially in Josh Ratcliffe's vocals, it very much um, channeling that sort of vocal effect there. And it's just really effectively discussing sort of leaving all that's holding you down in the dust and embracing complete freedom. There's an increasing intensity throughout the song, which reaches a crescendo at the end, accompanying the refrain of Can't You See I'm Losing Control, which feels like it's slightly at odds with the initial sentiment of embracing freedom and finding that you still need a certain level of balance and control to keep sight of your ultimate goals. But that dichotomy works very nicely to lead into the following song. The following song, Game Over, has massive Harvester of Sorrow vibes going throughout it and has this sort of apocalyptic feel, which on face value you just understand it to be sort of end of the world kind of vibe. But when you really look at it, it's more of a, it can feel painful to reach the end of the things that are holding you back and saying I am discarding it all but at the same time that's in the positive so you've got this sort of world ending vibe in the sense of the old life is ending and you're starting anew. Throughout it there's this very foreboding feeling from the guitar work that just it's one of my other favourites on the album because of the very menacing feel from the guitars and there's a sort of marching feel from the drum work which drives force and then ramps up into an assaulting charge and really drives home the message. Lastly, we have Total Control. Got a very good feel for this, it has a feel of sort of early black label society and it very much delivers the message of finally reaching a point where you've gotten out of the darkness and you're finally in control of yourself and builds and builds and releases this final defiant scream of being in total control in the face of all that's been keeping you in the darkness of the deep depression. It works really well as a final track and closes things out very satisfactorily, which it's one of those odd examples of I definitely look forward to hearing more from Resurgence, but 
This doesn't leave me wanting in a good way. It makes me sort of like, right, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with how it ended. It doesn't make me go, wait, that was it. Overall, I'd give this album a four out of five. There's a lot going for it. It's drawing on a lot of really cool influences whilst making things their own. I really like how you've got this good balance of they're making stuff their own, but they're also showcasing what has inspired them. There's just odd bits of songs that I'd like to hear more from and like to hear them developed a bit more. So it, if you've got sort of special edition, special extended editions of those songs or ideas that you didn't initially get to include in them, I'd love to hear them. That's it for this episode. Next one will either be yeah, next one will either be Black Anima by Lacuna Coil or Vision 2020 Vision by D Krups. The latter will greatly depend on when I'm able to, because I'm friends with the front man of D Krups. Um, it'll greatly depend on when I'm able to get um, some questions about the album answered because they're currently on tour. But yeah, that's it for this episode. This album has definitely been honoured and trusted.